Hey everyone, in this video I'll be reviewing SV Bonnie's SV50370 ED Refractor Telescope. I've had enough time to test this thoroughly and in this video I'll give you my thoughts on whether you should consider buying this or not. I've already reviewed the big brother of the scope. Feel free to check out that video as well to help you make up your mind. There is so much to love about this little scope, but there is one minor issue as well. I'll get to it later. First, let's talk about its specifications. This is SV Bonnie's 70 ED refractor. Its focal length is 420 mm, which is considered moderately wide in astrophotography. Just to give you a sense, you can fit the whole horsehead nebula with flame nebula quite easily with a crop sensor camera. The aperture is 70mm, which makes this scope quite fast f6 scope. If you are using field flasher or reducer, its focal length will drop down to 336mm and scope f ratio will become 4.8, which is very fast indeed. So this is a wide field and fast telescope. Let's talk about the glass that this uses. The most important thing to look for in any telescope is its glass, whether it's using reputable glass or not. This little scope thankfully uses SBL51 extra dispersion glass, which is tried and tested and quite reputable. This glass reduces chromatic aberrations significantly and provides high contrast, razor sharp views. Personally, I would stay away from any scope that doesn't use extra dispersion glass because chromatic aberration will ruin the views. But this scope uses a good reputable glass that has my confidence. Also, this scope can resolve up to 1.97 arc second, which is excellent. This glass is fully multi-coated with ultra-wideband SMC Super Multi-Coating, which is claimed to reduce reflection ratio down to just 0.2%. This can help greatly with brightness and true colors. Let's talk about the focuser that this scope uses. After glass, I think the second most important thing to watch out for is focuses because if glass is great but the focus is sloppy it isn't going to make astrophotography easy. But thankfully this scope comes with dual speed rack and pinion focuser. In my view it's a better focuser than many older Crayfords. It's buttery smooth, it doesn't slip. It has plenty of travel to come to focus with all my eyepieces without needing any extension tubes. What I love about this focuser is that it's just so smooth. Focusing is always a pleasure. There's no hint of backlash or any of that sort. I particularly enjoy the fine tuning knob which allows you to get the focus just right. There's a tightening screw under the focuser that can allow you to lock the focuser in place once you've got the focus right. Another useful feature is that the focuser can rotate 360 degrees. Now this is immensely helpful in framing and setting orientation of the camera. Although I found that because the dovetail is quite small, you won't be able to do 360 degrees. You can upgrade the dovetail if you want to be able to do that. That said, I have no complaints about the focuser. It's buttery smooth, it has generous back focus, its weight rating is about 5 kgs, so you can put quite a load on it. It can carry my DSLR without any issue. This scope comes with hoop and dovetail, which are made with good solid material. Tension knobs too are reasonably large and easy to use. This uses a Vixton style mount which too feels quite durable. Some scopes have dew shield that wobble and do all kinds of funny stuff. Well this scope has a dew shield that is quite solid and snug. It doesn't wobble at all and it helps keeping the dew as well as stray light away from your scope which is quite important. 
In terms of aesthetics, I think it has a good feel about it. There's nothing plastic in this scope. To my eye, it looks quite small and attractive. It feels light but solid at the same time. So I would say aesthetically, this is quite nice. It weighs about 2.2 kgs, which is very light. So if you have got a small mount or Sky Adventurer 2i, you can easily use this. Well, what about performance? How does this perform in the field? Well, let me show you a few sample photos that I took with the scope. I usually test my scopes with single images rather than stacked images. I feel that stacked images can introduce their own problems which might not have anything to do with scopes. I will also not be using reducer or field flashner because I want to test the scope, not the flashner. Well, here's the photos. First, let's look at the Orion Nebula. This is a 1 minute exposure at 1600 ISO with Canon 1000D. What I'm looking for is to see if there is any chromatic aberration or fringing or anything that shows defect in the glass. Well, to my eye, there is no chromatic aberration, no fringing or any of that sort. Let's move to perhaps brighter star. Surely it will show chromatic aberration if there is any. Well, this is one 60 seconds exposure of the Horsehead Nebula. Let me zoom in. As you can see, again, there is no chromatic aberration or fringing. So in my books, this scope has a decent quality for astrophotography. Obviously, at the edges, you can see stars in weird shapes. And that's because I didn't use a flattener or reducer. For edge-to-edge -edge sharpness, you must use flattener. Well, here's a stacked photo just to give you an idea of what to expect. So overall, I think this scope is excellent and produces nice looking images. It's chromatic aberration free as far as I can tell. There is no fringing problem. It produces sharp, high contrast photos. Well, these are all the pros, but what are some cons? Well, there are two big cons as far as I can see. Firstly, this scope comes with a short Wixen style plate. To turn the focus at 360 degrees, you would need to get a better, longer Wixen style plate. But if you don't care about turning the focus at 360 degrees, then that's not an issue. Another con is that this scope doesn't come with finder scope attachments. You'll have to buy it separately for a few bucks. Not a big deal, but slightly inconvenient. That said, for the price, I think this is an absolute steal. The pros outweigh cons by far. This is an excellent scope. It has good quality glass, excellent focuser, it's very light, comes with a durable dew shield, and the aesthetics are pleasing. I'm quite impressed with this little scope. And I think if you are in the market for buying scopes, this is good budget scope to go for. I would highly recommend this. If you found this video to be helpful, please subscribe. And if you have any questions, please comment below and I'll get back to you.